After glycolysis, the link reaction and the Krebs cycle have taken place, the reduced form of the electron carriers, that is NADH and FADH2, are sources of electrons for the electron transport chain. These are transported to the inner membrane of the mitochondrion and to the cristae. In the inner membrane, there is a series of electron carriers represented by the white circles here. On the inner membrane, NADH is first oxidized to NAD+, releasing two electrons, represented by E- here. Those electrons are picked up by the first electron carrier in the chain. Those electrons are then passed down a series of electron carriers found in the inner membrane, each successive carrier having a slightly higher electronegativity, or that is, a stronger attraction for the electrons. As this happens, energy is released, and this energy is used to pump protons or hydrogen ions via active transport into the intermembrane space. FADH2 enters the electron transport chain at a lower energy level than did NADH. The FADH2 is also oxidized into FAD, releasing electrons which are picked up by the electron carriers in the chain. These electrons continue to pass down the series of electron carriers and with each successive carrier release energy. This energy continues to be used to pump protons or hydrogen ions from the mitochondrial matrix into the intermembrane space. At the very end of the chain, the final electron acceptor is oxygen. Two de-energized electrons combine with two hydrogen ions and the oxygen in order to form water, one of the products of aerobic respiration. As these electrons continue to be passed down the electron transport chain, hydrogen ions or protons continue to be actively transported from the mitochondrial matrix to the intermembrane space, creating a proton gradient, where the concentration of protons is higher in the intermembrane space than it is in the matrix. Therefore, the hydrogen ions diffuse passively through a channel in ATP synthase back into the mitochondrial matrix from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. The enzyme harnesses the available energy, therefore allowing for the phosphorylation of ADP into ATP. This process is known as chemiosmosis. For every one molecule of glucose, a total of 32 ATP are produced through the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis. So as a review of aerobic respiration, if you recall in glycolysis, we used two ATP, but then produced four. So there's a net gain in ATP of two ATP. The Krebs cycle produced two ATP and the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis produced 32 ATP. And this is all for one molecule of glucose. Therefore, in total, for one molecule of glucose in aerobic respiration, we produce 36 ATP. So overall, aerobic respiration can be represented in the equation, which would be C6H12O6, otherwise known as glucose, plus 6O2, produces 6CO2 and 6H2O, along with energy in the form of ATP or lost as heat.